Thank you, Chair. Um, good evening to everyone. Good evening to everyone on the call. Thank you for the opportunity to share some thoughts around COVID-19 as it relates to marketing and communications. I'm so sorry I couldn't be there with you guys this evening, but duty called and I had to be away. So a couple hours earlier, Maria facilitated me and I was able to videotape the presentation. So again, just to introduce myself, my name is Winnell Gregorio and I am the Director of Marketing and Communications at the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine campus. Professionally, that, that's on the professional side. On the personal side, I am a wife and I am also mother to two beautiful girls ages 10 and 8. And of course, that's what keeps me really, really busy most of the time. So uh, let's get into the topic. The plan, as you know, is to talk about some of the marketing communications initiatives around COVID-19 for both audiences, your employees, as well as your customers. So let's jump right into the presentation. Let me start to share my screen. Okay, so before we actually dive into the how-tos, as I talked about in the playbook, I want us to understand our primary audiences. As I mentioned, it's the employer and the employee, that relationship, as well as the employer and the customer relationship that we will deal with right now. And it's important to understand before we get into any strategies or any tactics, what are they feeling at this moment? How, how are they feeling right now? And this will allow us to craft messages, to craft strategies once we understand what's going on with our audiences. And so I took the liberty to do a current situation or a situational analysis from the different perspectives. And let me share a quick, uh, a quick overview of the worker perspective. These are some of the thoughts that I am hearing, people around me and, and people I know, and I, I took the liberty to share some with you. I'm nearly 55 years old and I hear that the, that's the first group of persons they're sending home. Another that the parents may share that the teachers have stopped sending work for the kids. How are my children going to advance? The others are, you know, from the worker, how I'm so scared to go back out to work for fear of infection. My wife got a huge pay cut. How will we survive? There's another that uh, for those who are in essential work, the husband is never around and I have to do everything every day. How is the company going to rationalize cuts? What if I get sent home? Those with elderly parents, taking care of my mother with Alzheimer's is such a task on top of everything else. And then we have persons who possibly had a member of their family or a close friend passing away or suffering from COVID-19. And, uh, and of course, unfortunately, there are those who at this time are suffering from physical abuse at home and thinking how much more of this I can take. So those are just a few feelings or perspectives from the worker that we need to be cognizant of at this time. And then we go on to the employer from their perspective. Most employers are thinking, the government just needs to open the country now. And of course, at the back of everyone's mind, how are they going to make cuts? They know that people are struggling financially. How are they actually going to cut costs? Why can't the staff deliver the work? They're home. Why aren't they delivering the work as quickly as I need it? In a world of change, how will we as an organization stay relevant? Some employees, some employers, sorry, they're thinking uh, the tenants don't understand that I too have to, to pay my mortgage. You know, they want a, a decrease or they want, to, they want to have no rent to pay, but I too have to pay a mortgage. Others are worried about having to provide PPE for all staffers once we have a relax of the stay-at-home orders. I cannot understand why there's anxiety to return to work. So the employers are thinking in the opposite way. Why are staff anxious to come back to work? No word yet from our landlord. I may have to give up my space in this building. I need new ideas, innovation, sales. I need to increase these things in, 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 in short order. My kind of business is face-to-face. -face. I hope the vaccine comes by July. Will we have long-term reputational damage? Customer attrition is keeping me up at night. How and where do I advertise? So those are some of the cries from the employer or the business owner perspective. And then we look at the customer. What is the customer thinking right now? A lot of customers are thinking, I'm not spending any unnecessary money at all. I'm just saving my money right now. How do I know what the, that the products are clean and COVID free? So people are really conscious of, of touching products. They're, they're very cautious. And then I'm hearing the sentiment, how, how in this day and age could a business not have a website? So there's disbelief that we've gone digital and, and companies still don't have a website. 
scientists say two years. So that's when I'll consider any large purchases again, or some, some call it luxury purchases. Another perspective, in choosing my brands, I'm going low end. So that people are buying must-haves. My focus is health. So I'm doing online gym classes and we see people doing yoga, Pilates, aerobics on, on online now. Why are these companies advertising so much? It's interrupting my gaming because as you know, the online ads come between social media, between the games and, and on the user end, some people think that it, you know, it's interrupting them. And the last thought after that video on social media with the moldy leather goods, I'm not buying a thing when the malls open. And so, we see here that the customers are already cautious. They are concerned about the situation and they're going to be apprehensive in terms of making sales. So that's a good example of some of the perspectives. So what we see before us is an organizational shift. The family home has now become work, school, a place of worship. It has become the gym. It has become for some of us the daycare. But what we need to remember, what we need to have in focus all the time is that we're not actually working from home. These are not normal circumstances. We are in a crisis trying to work from home. And I think a lot of employers need to remember that at the time of making possible demands of employees and, and maybe not understanding enough. So we need to be cognizant that it's a crisis situation. Another organizational shift we see is that the employer-employee relationship has really, really changed. Many of you may have had Zoom, Zoom meetings with your staff members, with colleagues, and I'm sure you feel it. There is a divide. The digital divide, of course, relates to the, the, the persons that may not have a device or they may not have internet access. And those that do have access and you're on the calls with them, you feel that sometimes the calls are strange. They're, they're, there's no room for the nonverbal cues, so you're not seeing... Uh, the, the usual way you would have in a meeting, you can't read the room. And so that relationship that would have been, you know, the, the local training way, the warmth that we feel, the cool your mouth that you will give or, or a wink eye, we, we can't really relate to that over the, over the internet. And so that shift in, in a relationship, especially a tighter relationship, like a, an employee and a supervisor, that is now strained as well. Another shift is that everything before March 14th is, is moot. Right, uh, in organizations, uh, we had a strategic plan and we were following the plan, everything related back to the plan. But now the strategic plan is out the door and we have to, to recraft. We, we've heard that um, sales are down. We know that anxiety is up. We know that the buyers are not interested in buying right now unless it's, it's food or really essential must-haves. And we know that service offerings are in the main e-based. So those are some of the organizational shifts taking place that we need to accept and be aware of. So what then for the future? What are we as leaders to do? The one thing we know about the, the future is that it's uncertain. And this is a word that is being bandied about a lot that we really don't know which way to go. And so the way forward is fraught with uncertainty. And, and as leaders, it's not an easy place to be at all. Because daily we are being bombarded by our employees, might be our customers, and it pains as a leader not be able to be in control and be able to give advice or insight without a measure of certainty. But what we're sure about is that two months ago, anything before that is, is many cases no longer valid. In fact, we were discussing masks at one time and it was being said that the masks weren't necessary. Now masks are a must have. And who knew, who knew two months ago even that, that another virus would come along, another disease called the Kawasaki disease that is now seeming to affect little children? Who knew that that was around the corner for us? So we see that it's, it's a, a state of constant change. And so the, the only way to describe it is a, is a way forward of uncertainty. But my friends, all is not lost. We can still do some planning. So the first step in the playbook to manage the Marcoms during the time of COVID is to acknowledge the evolution staring us in the face. We, we know that it's a reality check. And as I shared all the points earlier, we need to acknowledge how our customers feel, how our employees feel. And as employees, we need to understand what our higher ups feel, what they're going through at this time. And with the major shifts, we need to understand the nuances of the different situations. And I want to pause for a second for us to really think about this question. 
do we really care how our audiences are doing? And this, this is an important question because what we're asked next to do in our next step is to listen, but not just to, to listen, but to listen actively. And what it calls for us is to do some temperature checks sometimes, maybe formal research if we have the availability of it, or industry research that we could get our hands on. We really need to do some research. We need to talk to our customers. We need to talk to our employees. We need to find out what's going on. How are you feeling? And, and the feedback we get, the data we get, will really give us insights on, as I mentioned before, in the perspectives, the concerns of staff, and it gives us a clue in how to address these concerns. It helps us to think of different ways to engage your staff, to engage your customers, to understand possibly who are some potential customers around the corner, uh, and how to plan in this new phase. This morning, I was reading an article, and it talked about a survey in the US uh, with companies and over half, half of the companies that they surveyed had not yet reached out to their customers since the stay at home order. So if we're not reaching out to our customers, how are we planning to serve them? How are we planning to give them what they want? Step three. So in, in facing the reality and in doing some, some deep dive into our different audiences, finding out what they think, how they feel, another thing we can do and we need to do is understand the trends. There are certain things that's happening and, and it's very different from before, very, very different from before. And I put up this slide to share a few with you. Uh, I have to reiterate that, that the trends have really shifted on the social media front we see gifts that that virtual hug in the corner there, the purple and yellow. That's one of the most popular gifts, and 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 it is being used by 33% more people that than because we're on devices, we're constantly on our phones, and so special gifts actually have been created with the stay-at-home order. Things like virtual hugs or or working from home and that sort of thing. And um, then we have TikTok. I don't know how many of you are on it, but uh, with um. With younger kids, I am certainly on it. And TikTok, TikTok has taken over. It's actually the number one downloaded app in 2020. And it's really an app with music and dancing. And the younger kids are really on it. But what has happened is that since COVID, they're seeing a rise in the Gen Xs. So whereas before it was a, a Gen Z or, or as they call it, the iGen uh, population frequent in TikTok. What you have now is the moms and dads. So for example, I am on TikTok with my kids dancing because I'm home now. I have time to spend with them. I have time to learn a dance and to go on TikTok and do the dance. So that companies are now using TikTok to not just reach the children anymore, the teens, but to look at reaching the parents, my generation, the millennials, that sort of thing. Because we were never on TikTok before, but it, again, it has shifted. Another shift taking place, of course, is gaming, because as I said, we have more time, we have more screen time, we're home. And then in the, in the, in the home, we talked about this at our last Rotary meeting or, or the meeting before that, which is where we are seeing a lot of um, homemaking. So we're seeing a lot of gardening. This actual picture is one of the members of staff from my department, and he actually turned to home gardening. And not only that, he's turned it into a business. So he's going around to people's homes. And if you're interested in setting up a kitchen garden, he and his partner will come to your home, set up the kitchen garden. No fuss, no, 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 no fuss on your part. You just have to pay and that's it. And I thought that was an ingenious way to be making money in this time, doing a little extra. And of course, it goes towards food security. Another one is baking. Everybody's a, a, a baker now. And this is a, a picture of my... My good friend's uh, delicious delights, her cake and, and her Parmesan bread. And she's a person that never, ever, ever cooked before. And now she is in the kitchen. And so what can we as organizations do for these, these new customers or these potential customers? Well, I got a message from a friend uh, from Kitchen Corner. And I see Kitchen Corner, the local company that provides uh, uh, kitchen utensils. They are now um, switching online. They're sending um, viral messages about making their products available to us. Uh, no fuss, it comes to our door. And that is the kind of thing that we need to be thinking of during this time. What are the trends that are happening and how we can jump onto those trends? So we have done our research. We have talked to different audiences. We're looking at the trends and compiling all the information we re really need to put in a pot and really create our new plan. As I said, many of the components of our marketing and communications plan 
pre-March 14th will now be no more. It may have to be tweaked. It may have to be changed. And so, be, uh, uh, number one, the alignment with the COVID plan is actually the new way forward. Before, we would align our plan with the organization strategic plan, but now we, it, it has to be aligned with the COVID management plan. And, and here I go into talking about the different uh, measures or different steps in the marketing plan. As I mentioned, considering new income streams, new markets to penetrate, gaining insights. The channel mix is something I wanted to talk about because as I said, the channels that we used before may have to be adjusted. Internet radio is now becoming a very big thing because as I, I said again, people are focused on filling their days with community and filling their days with connection. Um, you know, meeting up with friends, that sort of thing. So that pivot to digital as well, it's, it's really, really very important. I know with Burger King, in, at, at home right here, you can sit down and go through an app and you can get Burger King at your door. There's a huge surge in, in apps like uh, House Party. There's a popular app that uh, a House Party video chatting app that people are using to connect. I think you could connect with up to eight friends. And uh, those are the kinds of things that people are doing. So we need to pivot to digital to really reach our, our different customers. Email marketing, I wanted to make a caution. Everyone is jumping on the email marketing bandwagon and we want to send out emails to our clientele, but be gentle. People are also bombarded with information at this time. So it's really finding a sweet spot in terms of the frequency of communicating with your audiences, the length of it, the subject line, there's a lot of variables that need to be considered in email marketing, so be gentle. Creating engaging content. This is the time to create content because we, ha we have the time, uh, we have the ideas, so it's, it's time to really, you know, put probably videos, create new videos, create uh, things that entertain. People are looking for a lot of entertainment now. People are consuming more online content more than ever. So it's time to educate and also to, to, to educate and to entertain. People are looking for those two variables right now. And so these are some of the considerations that would go into building up your new marketing and communications plan. Looking at the channels, looking at the um, different strategies, looking at digital has to be at the core of everything we do now and looking at creating some good content, some good storytelling in there. Step five in our playbook is engage. Nothing replaces the human connection. These are just a few ideas I wanted to share that I try to use myself. Now, from an, an employee perspective, we know the Zoom meetings could you know, become a little bit monotonous. So we have to try to think of differences with Zoom meetings. One of the things that I try to do with my team is once in a while ask the team to have a meeting with the cameras on so that you actually see faces, you connect, and, and you know, it becomes a little more familiar again because working online can be really distant and it could be really lonely at times. So you want to, to have little ideas. Another idea we have as a, as a team is maybe once in a while to have a team line where you go on and it's not for the purpose of just work, but you go on, you know, you bring snacks and, and you kick back and you just talk, how you're going, how you, how your kids, how, what, what's happening. And so not everything would be about the work. And so just the same balance you would bring into the organization, from the organization, you bring it into the, to the Zoom meeting. So it's not always when, when an employee hears another Zoom meeting, they're ready to pull out their hair. Some of the other ideas are phone calls. It may seem passe, but th there's, a, there's a real merit in picking up the phone and calling someone to say, how are you? I noticed on the Zoom call, you were a little bit quiet. You're more than normal. What's happening? What's going on with you? And then there are some persons who may not have access to the technology. We cannot leave them behind. We have to pick up the phone and we have to reach out. WhatsApp groups, another way of, of in an organization or even in, in a customer setting to create a group of a community of like-minded persons. Again, we need to watch it because this is a really sensitive period. And so a joke that may have been funny pre-COVID is really not funny now. And, and we need to be very careful about being tone deaf to those kinds of things. Of course, with a, with a WhatsApp group, if you have it among your customers, you will not want to probably be sending religious messages because we have a diverse background. We have a multi-religious multi -religious society. And so we need to be careful about those kinds of things. And of course, just encourage dialogue, mental wellness. Mental wellness is really important at this time. We have a lot of persons feeling concerned, feeling down. We have depression. 
And so we have to be sensitive to those issues, especially with our staff. EAP programs, employee assistance programs should be provided to staff. I know they are tele services, they are online services, and we need to be offering that to our staff to, to manage in this transition of this new normal. Adjust your tone. Don't pretend everything is normal. We cannot, cannot, cannot pretend everything is normal at this time. And I talked a little about tone before, but in the communiques, we, we really can't be the same. We cannot have a hard sell. Now, we, we don't want it gloom and doom, but we don't want, as I said, a hard sell either. So it's about finding that balance, that sweet spot. You shouldn't veer away too much from your, your brand personality because every brand has its unique personality. But on the other hand, as I said, you can't be tone deaf. So you need to go back to the feelings of your audiences and really understanding your audiences, what they're doing right now, how they're feeling. And that should dictate the tone that we use. So take, for example, a situation where you want to call a member of staff to check on a work project. You know that member of staff is at home with children. Then the first thing you should do when you pick up the phone to call is say, is it an okay time to talk? Do you have five minutes now? Are you busy? Do you want to call back? Or send a WhatsApp before they call, just checking in. Is it okay? Do you have time for a five minute call? And, and those are the kinds of sensitivities we have to have at this time. On the screen, I actually have an example, two examples. One is, uh, it's, it's, you, can, you can read it, we're learning day by day how small the world is uh, as the outbreak of the, and spread of the coronavirus jumps from continent to continent and it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. Very sensitive, very caring. Then it reaches, we continue to be open from nine to nine. So it seems though that even though this mall is really concerned and expressing all that they are and they have all the surfaces and counters clean, they are still open nine to nine. And so that greets persons in a different way. And some people think, well, well, you're not really sensitive at all. So your workers are exposed. You're, you're encouraging persons to come in for the same hour. No change has happened. You haven't altered your time to, to suit the, the, um, the situation. And on the opposite side, you have Nike. And Nike is saying that the health of athletes around the world is our top priority. That's their opening statement. Then they go into talking about some of their branches will be closed uh, and you can still shop. So this is not a hard sell. It's not go out and buy a Nike. It's gently saying, if you need us, we're still here. Catch us on the app or catch us on our website. And again, so it's, it's like a sandwich. You have sensitivity at the top, sensitivity, and then you're showing that you're cutting or you're curtailing your, your operations given the situation. And of course, the nice Nike uh, ending with love your Nike family. So just some ideas in terms of tone and, and adjusting it for this specific period. Number seven in our playbook, send the right message. So this deals with the actual communicating now, the language, the narrative. And uh, for many of us, we, I think we were holding back. We were waiting to see what would happen. But in waiting, it creates a gap and our audiences are not hearing anything and they want to know what's happening and it creates more space between you and your audience. And so while you work on the message, we have to kind of remember that we need to communicate quickly. We need to get to the point in our messaging and in everything we need to be also careful with the, the words. I put it there in terms of uh, overused words because I think we have heard the word unprecedented, I think probably a thousand times since March 14th. That said, there are not too many synonyms for unprecedented, but, but let's try to use it. Let's try to be creative and come up with them. Uh, we've all heard the phrase, we're in this together. I think many, many companies have gone with that as the tagline or as their hook in this period. We need to be also careful about humor. Humor is a very touchy thing, and especially in this sensitive period, if you have to use humor, you really have to know your audiences and know your, your brand personality to be able to use humor at this specific time. Number eight, do good. There's ample opportunity. One of the things that resonates with people is just that feeling good, that you are doing something good. And so another way that brands can survive and, and, and really keep top of mind in this period is really the, the, the social responsibility that they have. 
this is a time to lead by example. And this is something that Rotary is about as well. Uh, some brands will score big at this time for the, the social responsibility efforts that they are into. People see the genuine care in acts of kindness and they grow an affinity to a brand and, or a company because of this. These are just three examples. So we had Crocs that they were giving away, uh, the footwear for the health workers. We had Angostura, which is close to home. I think this was shared a lot virally and, and, and people really felt that it was, it was important that the employees, this came from the employees as well and this really struck a chord. And recently I saw this other one, which I thought was quite unique, which are a group of uh, organizations coming together with actually helping people fill their forms, those who aren't able to, to fill their forms for relief it was helping them to do that. And these are just different ways in which we could reach out. I know a lot of organizations in the country are doing that, but they're doing hampers, they're doing care packages, different ways of reaching out to the less fortunate. And people remember that. People remember organizations that do, do good for others. Stand out, which is, is number nine. And I wanna give a, a few examples of some that really you know, resonated with me um, for different reason. The, the first one webinar is help, to help your quarantine blues. I saw that very early on in the pandemic and, and I thought the title was very catchy because everything you were seeing was just webinars, 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 and then you, you're already feeling stuck indoors and, and this quarantine blues really, really hit home. I, I needed to open that particular email. Last week I saw this one, I don't know if many of you would have seen it, which is Noodles on Your Head. It's a company in Germany, a, a cafe, and they've created hats on the sidewalk cafe, and the hats are attached to pool noodles, which are six feet long. And so every, every uh, client in the, in the restaurant is wearing the hats so that they will be six feet apart. So if your noodle hits someone else, you know that you're too close to them. And those are some really novel things that people are doing to deal with the pandemic to stay relevant, but to also probably get into the news and to be newsworthy and to be top of mind for people. And these are some other, some other examples. My daughters go to dance class with Caribbean School of Dance, and I thought it was a really good way to keep the parents and the children engaged, because at a point in time during the pandemic, we didn't know what to do with the children. It was, it was the Easter holidays, and they were bouncing off the walls, and the dance school came as a savior. They were having Friday's dance class, Free Up Fridays on Facebook, where they would have a popular personality come on and, and, and have the kids dancing, whichever genre they were into. They put on their tap dance shoes or their ballet shoes and they would dance and it would keep them busy for quite a while. So I, I particularly like that. But you have a cause right now, the cause bear. They have, a, you have to send in stories of persons who are doing something or stressed out at home and, and they give you a cause, a six pack on us. So they're engaging their customers by letting people send in stories and then they send back all their product. So it's, it's um, viral and it's, it's in the news a lot. One I, I really like and I listen to is Bonnet Bigford. Her, she has a V-spot every Friday night where she is live and she's singing uh, on a particular, uh, a particular theme for the Friday night. And, and that is really, really, really interesting. I would encourage you to take it in on a Friday evening. So these are just some that, that uh, are top of mind, but they, they stand out because they're doing things differently. And uh, bringing up the rare in the, in, the, uh, in the steps is number 10, evaluate, then recreate. Because as I shared, we don't know what's around the corner. We don't know if, we don't have God forbid that there's a second wave, then all of this as well changes and we go back to a different, a different, a different narrative. We have different communications, we have a different marketing consideration. So the one thing that we could do is, is understand and appreciate that the change is constant, but what we do need to have is particular values and particular attitudes and I, and I list them down below because these are the things we really need to hold true to our marketing and communications planning. So before I wrap, what I want to say is that as leaders, we have so many things to consider, but uh, we, we, can't, we can't do for others, we can't engage our customers, we can't engage our staff really well if we ourselves are not okay. And to be okay, it really means that we need to take care of self. If it means uh, taking your downtime, getting your exercise, taking your walks, uh, 
doing the gardening. We really need to take care of ourselves so that we can be better leaders in, in this new season. And to summarize, just to, to rehash some of the, the messages that I shared, initially I talked about understanding and acknowledging the major shift that has happened and then some of the, of the nuances of that. Understanding our audiences, how they feel, where they are at, what they're listening to, what they're not doing, what they're opposed to, really getting data to inform what we do next. Staying connected, staying connected with our staff members, our colleagues, our clients, um, and finding the opportunities out there because as I mentioned, there are new trends that bring the opportunities, but we really need to, to put on our thinking caps and find them and, and think differently about the services we can offer. Of course, as I mentioned, we have to do a, a new plan, a new marketing communications plan with, with, with differences to stand out from the, from the others, but be ready to pivot again if needed, because as I said, we are, we're not sure what tomorrow brings. We're not sure what's going to happen around the corner, and we need to be ready to pivot and pivot again. So with that, I want to thank you, Chair, for the opportunity to present some thoughts around marketing and communications, especially, especially as it relates to COVID-19 and what brands can do to, to shift their thinking, to, to communicate better, or to, to, to re-engage, or to stay connected with their specific audiences. I want to thank you, members, and our guests, coming to the meeting and I'm unfortunately not there to answer questions live, but you can send me emails with comments and questions and I will be really happy to entertain them. Thank you very, very much for the opportunity and have a good evening.